Urinals are the things men often use to relieve themselves in the bathroom. They come in lots of sizes and shapes, and you can find one in just about any men's restroom. But not in the Portland building, not when it reopens. The city has redesigned all the bathrooms to be gender neutral, which means urinals are banned even in the men's room. Welcome back to another Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. And yes, urinals are things used in men's bathrooms. Not sure why that needed explaining. But then again, it is in 2019 and, uh, you know, times are tough. IQs are tough to come by. Have you seen this story in the news, though? It's very Jay Leno of me, actually. Have you seen what's in the news? <laughs> That's the one thing I miss about Jay Leno not being on the air anymore, is people doing impressions of his monologues. Hey, have you heard about this? You guys, you guys seen this news story? <laughs> Anyways, no urinals planned for newly remodeled Portland building. The total remodel will cost taxpayers $195 million, a spokeswoman said. She did not have a breakout on how much the bathroom work will cost. I think that's supposed to say a breakdown. She did not break out in acne at, at the question of how much it will cost. It's a good sign. It even gives a description of the urinals in the article as well. Not sure why we need to describe what urinals are multiple times. Come on now. So the building's first, third, and 15th floors will have a large multi-stall bathroom setup that men and women will use together. Other floors will have separate men's and women's bathrooms for some reason. But every floor will have at least one any gender bathroom. Not just gender neutral bathroom. Of course, any gender. Overall, there will be 42 all-user stalls, as the city calls them, and 104 gender-specific stalls. Now correct me if I'm wrong, is this really news? Should it be news? Probably not. Portland has more problems. They've got a big Antifa problem. As everybody knows, their mayor and their police staff are at odds. Their mayor is the chief of the police staff in their their weird municipality rules, laws. I don't know what they are. I don't know how that happens. Sounds like something from the 1300s. It is, of course, known as a very left-wing city, a very strong hold for Antifa types. and But to give them the best benefit of the doubt here it, this has got to be just business related you would have to assume it's easier to install it costs less it takes up less room that's got to be the reason right of course you know that's not <laughs> take a look at what the chief administrative officer tom reinhardt had to say we will continue to have gender specific male and female multi-stall restrooms that are readily available to any employee that prefers to use this <laughs> that prefers to use one but there will be no urinals in any restroom in the building. This will give us the flexibility we need for any future changes in signage. What, you prefer to use a male or female bathroom? <sighs> What's wrong with you? Future changes in signage, though. That should be one of the first telltale portions of this. Of course, that obviously means that they're going to try to change them all to gender, gender neutral. Very cool. Why else would you need to plan for in the future bathroom, <laughs> bathroom signs being changed? He also says, I'm convinced that this is the right way to ensure success as your employer. Remove arbitrary barriers in our community and provide leadership that is reflective of our shared values. Arbitrary barriers, of course. Your gender is just arbitrary. It's a barrier to how, it's a barrier to you doing your job. Urinals and men and women only bathrooms, so unnecessary for the future of mankind. I mean, people kind. <laughs> Don't want to get confused. We can't be we can't be all separate about how we use our bathrooms and if it's people kind or man kind or woman kind. Also, the one quote in there that I liked is leadership that is reflective of our shared values. File this under first world problems if I've ever uh, needed to use that hashtag for anything, which I do every day when I'm live tweeting in fours about my first world problems about the deep state. These people are so arrogant that they think removing urinals and like making gender neutral bathrooms is an act of leadership that's goes that's going out of their way to remove arbitrary barriers in our community as we put it. You're oh, you're such a hero, you're such a leader. Way to go. Way to fight for society, bro. The building's first, third, and fifteenth floors will have large multi-stall bathrooms that men and women will use together. Other floors will have separate men's and women's bathrooms. But every floor will also have at least one any gender bathroom. Now, I took a wager, a personal one, don't gamble, bet123.com, 
There's so many gambling sites. Gender neutral bathrooms, meaning ones like this where it says a bunch of, it's a bunch of stalls, not like individual private bathrooms where you'll see that in bars and stuff. I would wager these are widely unpopular places, except for places like bars and only places where people aren't using the bathroom that much. So like you go into the restroom area at a bar and it's a bunch of private stalls and they call that gender neutral bathroom. Sure, nobody really cares. But in terms of men and women actually going into the same bathrooms together, I would assume that that's pretty unpopular. So I tried to find a few few sources. 2017 Crux Marist, Marist poll? I don't know what that means. Sounds like Marxist to me and the globalists. <laughs> poll of 545 people showed a margin of almost 40 points. A majority of Americans, 66% to 27%, do not think someone who is transitioning to become the opposite sex should be allowed to use whichever showers or locker rooms they want. By a margin of nearly 20 points, a majority of Americans have the same opinion about bathroom use, 56 to 38%. Now that's 2017, keep that in mind. The next one I found was from 2019 in May, Harvard Cap slash Harris poll of 1,295 registered voters. A majority would support a law requiring public institutions to allow transgenders to use bathrooms that align with their gender identity or stated sex, according to this poll. The survey found 54% support for such a law, with a plurality 44% saying the Supreme Court should rule on the matter rather than leaving it up to the states at 34% or Congress at 20%. 52% of respondents said they would support a Supreme Court ruling found that transgender people have a constitutional right to use a bathroom that aligns with their identity. So that's saying that people would rather have the Supreme Court decide so that they can impose it on people, which is sadly in line when you get into these types of views. People think that they're so morally correct or have the moral high ground that that they should be able to force it upon other people. It's like the argument for that you don't have to tolerate intolerance, the Antifa-style argument, whereas I know it's best and that seems to be showcasing itself in this situation where it's like, I would rather just the Supreme Court, Supreme Court rule for the rest of the country so that the states, those a-holes in the South can't decide for themselves because they don't know what's best for them. But now, however, again, a different 2019 survey in June of over 1,000 people said over half of 1,017 American adults surveyed 51% agreed that transgender people should, quote, use the restroom that corresponds with their birth gender. Although the Gallup poll revealed broad support for transgender policies in line with birth gender, still a sizable proportion of Americans, 44%, expressed the view that it is acceptable for people to use bathrooms according to the gender they identify as. Now, I read two or three other surveys as well, and the trend seems to be from about 2015 on till now. About a 15 point swing in percentages of people who are in favor of gender neutral bathrooms or at the very least are okay with it being implemented personally i think it's unnecessary and like i said i don't think it's people who are using public bathrooms a lot um who care about them being implemented but if you're in a school if you're in an office environment or even at the gym it'd be i think it'd be really weird to have men and women around like you're in the bathroom stall let's say you're a guy in your bathroom stall and there's a girl doing makeup in the mirror <laughs> out, outside that's weird or vice versa you're a girl in a bathroom stall and you got three bros in there joking about whatever mixing their creatine drinks i think it would probably start to be weird But I don't think it's going to stop at bathrooms. If they continue, it's going to be the dressing room environment. And in countries like Canada, you, if, so as long as you're identifying, nobody can tell you legally that you can't use um, a bathroom to which your birth gender is not uh, correlating with. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. So you can use whatever change room you want is what I'm trying to say. And in Canada, they can't stop you. I'm getting a lot of sirens here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Hey, don't you know I'm doing a vids here? Now, people try to tell you that the gender stuff is made up, like it's it's all conditioning from society, and it's a made-up thing to control you and to put you into categories and things things of that nature, things of that nature and such and such. That's an Arnold. We can work on that. Oh, things of that nature and the gender and the social constructs. Oh. They'll tell you that biological sex is different from gender identity, but you can actually... It's funny how I want people to take me seriously, what I'm doing. Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Alex Jones, every 20 seconds. 
biological sex being different from gender identity is actually based on a theory that's somewhat recent. Now you can find people talking about this. Steven Crowder has a good video about it. Even if you don't like Steven Crowder, it's based on research. In the late 40s, this came up as a, a theory, I believe it was 1949, by a French woman. And then going into the 50s and 60s, what they did is they wanted to test this theory that um, biological sex is different from gender identity. So they took two twin boys and raised one as a girl. Now the one they, that was raised as a girl had a botched circumcision, so they removed his, uh, I think it was just his testicles, but it might have been all of it, and decided to raise him as a boy. Or sorry, as a girl. But by the time he turned 15, he wanted to be a boy again. Now this was what this boy went through stuff that people would consider child abuse, and I don't just mean raising them as the different gender. What I mean is that the guy who was doing the experiment on them, and that's I'll call it that, was having them simulate sexual positions where one's the boy, one's the girl. So it was some really weird stuff that you're getting children to be children to do to try to help your science experiment. Now what happened to them? Eventually the brother of the one raised as a girl, his twin brother, OD'd, and the boy who was experimented on eventually committed suicide. But the study is still referred to as a success and is used as the derivative for why these, for why gender is a social construct. Now, in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, an, another woman and other feminists wrote books uh, citing this study, even though the, the guy ended up killing himself and wanted to be, and became a boy later again in life, just at the, the age of 15. He would tell stories about how he would ask his brother to play with his toys, and his brother was very generous for letting him use his toys because he knew that he was miserable, miserable, trying to be forcibly raised as a girl. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that none of it works or that uh, people who claim that people who are raised as a different gender, this is not a, a statement that it's all this way. It all doesn't turn out horribly, but about half the time it does because we have the suicide rates and the regret rates, and it's pretty much around half of people who go through transgender surgery uh, attempt to commit suicide. But the problem is, is this is what the actual original <laughs> experiment showed, is that not only did he not take, he did not take his new gender, he didn't want to be the new gender, he wanted to be a boy, but then he also did commit suicide. So the worst parts about, about the whole transgender issue came to light in the very first experiment that they now all cite as the su success story. So this was used in a future feminist doctrine, I'll call it, to express the whole 600 genders thing. So we went from biological sex is different from gender identity to experimenting on boy, con concluding that it was a success, that we raised him as a girl and it was great, even though he, wanted to, he became a boy again and committed suicide. This is still enough of a success story to base feminist literature off of where we come up with the unlimited gender sort of things, and nobody questions this at all. So it's all very easy to trace. It's not for 600 years we've uh, had non-gendered language and it's never been this strict for gender roles as it was in the 1900s. Do not let people rewrite history for you and tell these things. Don't let people who are religious about their politics convince you of these things. Socialism, uh, no abortion laws whatsoever, the world's coming to an end, no borders. It's no coincidence that those are all the things that will call, get you called a bigot and you can't let other people rewrite history for you or tell you what you already know because that's what it's all about repetition until it becomes fact mm -hmm.